Greetings, fellow Bible readers. Welcome to week 14 of our Bible read-through. This week, we finish up the book of 2 Samuel, and we get just the first little bit of 1 Kings. And the readings for this week really kind of just continue on with the life of David. Last week, we saw the rise of David and the establishment of his kingdom. And this week, sadly, we get kind of the, the decline of his kingdom. Uh, we see the turning point in his life with his adultery with Bathsheba and how that really kind of marked and characterized the rest of his reign as a period of tumult and difficulty. So let's get down to the readings for each day of the week. On day one, as we look at chapters 11 through 13, we see that story of the adultery with Bathsheba unfold. And as you read through that, maybe keep a tally in your mind or maybe on a sheet of paper of all of the commandments that David broke as he not only committed that adultery, but also tried to cover it up. A positive thing to note from this section is not only Nathan's beautiful announcement of forgiveness, but also David's wonderful example of confidence in the resurrection. When his infant son is sick, David pleads to God for help. However, when he finds out that the child is dead, he worships God, he comes back to his home, carries out his business, and he confesses that there's nothing he can do to bring back his child, but he will go to spend eternity with his child in heaven. Also, at the very end of the reading, it's significant to note David's absenteeism in dealing with the situation between Amnon and Tamar and Absalom and the, the struggles between those children in David's own household. And we're going to see how that kind of comes back to, to haunt David a little later. Then on day two, as we look at chapters 14 and 15, we start to see how David's absenteeism as a father kind of impacted things as Absalom, that son whose sister had been raped by, by um, Amnon, takes revenge and, and kind of seems to still have a chip on his shoulder against dad in launching a rebellion against dad. We also see kind of the very family nature of this, this rebellion in not only the fact that Absalom, David's son, is rebelling against him, but one of the chief counselors who goes over to Absalom's side, Ahithophel, from what we can tell from piecing together little details of family connections, looking at some information about Bathsheba in chapter 11, verse 3, and some information about Ahithophel in chapter 23, verse 34, it seems that Ahithophel was the grandfather of Bathsheba, and so perhaps he helped Absalom because he was still upset about the way that David had treated his granddaughter, which would be very understandable. On day three, as we look at chapters 16 through 18, we see how God directs the course of this rebellion in kind of his unseen working in history in order to make sure that David remains king and the line of the Savior is preserved through Solomon. Then on day four, as we look at chapters 19 and 20, we see David show a great deal of forgiveness towards those who had wronged him, far more than many of the other people around him. Then on day five, as we look at chapters 20, or 21 and 22, if you need to review kind of the history of the Gibeonites and, and where they come from and how they fit into the, the history of Israel, you can go back to Joshua chapter 9 to check that out. The bigger thing that I'd encourage you to do is as you read through that psalm in chapter 22, I want you to maybe think about what situations from David's life might he have had in mind as he wrote some of the portions of that psalm. Then on day six, as we look at chapters 23 and 24, the thing that you'll want to, to pay attention to here is especially the details of that, that census and kind of the end result that David offered a sacrifice in order to, to bring that plague to an end. And we have driven home for us that there are some things where you have to pay full price. David paid full price for that sacrifice that he offered to the Lord. What's interesting is that the site where David offered that sacrifice would later become the site of the temple where the Israelites would offer all of their sacrifices, picturing the great sacrifice of Jesus, who would pay full price for our sins by his death on the cross. Then finally, on day seven, as we get into the first two chapters of First Kings, 
we see the final kind of negative results from that whole family situation of turmoil and unrest in David's household as another one of David's sons tries to take the kingship before it can go to Solomon and how ultimately through Nathan's inter Nathan the prophet's intervention that kingdom eventually passes to Solomon, the son that God said would take over that kingship and build a house for the Lord in the temple in Jerusalem. That's all for this week. We'll see you next week.